for a very kind introduction. Assalamualaikum and a very good morning to members of the floor, especially to my contender here, Dr. Muhammad Iqbal. Okay, as per introduction, I'm Fadlina from University Putra, Malaysia, and I'm serving Hospital Serdam. Okay, when I was called by Malaysian Society of Transplant to actually do this debate, I was like, oh my god, it's Iqbal. He's the gun of the future gun of transplant. And every time I meet him, he only talks about transplant, 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 transplant. And transplant are the least thing in my mind apart other things that I do in my practice. So, but I'll take the challenge, okay? So, I have to actually defend the motion that our country are actually not ready for the system that he's going to introduce, which is of our system, right? So, ladies and gentlemen, Malaysia is currently practicing the opt-in system, which means that only those who have given explicit consent to organ donation will be a donor. Those that wanted to donate have to actually go to the website or go and register, fill in the form, and they will be given a card. So if anything happened to them and they are willing to donate, we will procure the organs. Okay? So, but my friends here is going to tell you let's sway to other system, which is an opt-out. I'll tell you what is opt-out, right? Opt-out basically is a legislation or a system which make the diseased person decide or presume consent or first person consent. Hello, diseased person to decide. What is this? It is also mean one permitted organs to be posthumously removed unless unless an appropriate objection is made and sometimes referred to as a contracting out system. So to make it more simpler, let look at it. It has been seen as a system that giving the country effective claim on the organs for all your body, ladies and gentlemen. And the country owns all your organs after your death, but is willingly to give them back if you like. And it is also seen as an unlawful invasion of people's rights to control their own body. It has been said that op system, op -op system changed the fundamental limits of what the country can or cannot do without your explicit permission. Op -op also has been contested that doctors will be less likely to save an ailing patient if they believe that less resources will be spent in allowing that patient to die and use the patient's organ to save someone's life. And it's true that one third of respondents in 2010 survey by Federal Center of USA for Health Education believe that the doctors will do so if we practice our out system. Ladies and gentlemen, doctors shouldn't do harm. All right, remember that. And is Malaysia ready for the new system? As our Avengers actually ready to wipe out tunnels and who has changed the system by 50% wiping the population? I suppose Iqbal tried to be Thanos here. So, are we ready to be in this opt-out system, ladies and gentlemen? I believe you all will say no. And I will stand saying that it is not ready yet. My point number one, Malaysia's transplantation program is actually taking the cadaveric organ for therapeutic, medical education and research purposes according to Human Tissue Act 1974. In this act, there must be an express consent of the donor, either in writing or in oral, to, in the presence of two witnesses, to give their organ. And there must be no objection from the disease and surviving spouse or surviving next of kin. And it's the duty of the doctors to actually take all reasonable steps and find out if the disease has any objection to obtain consent from the next of kin. So, these are the fundamental and foundation and principle of opt-in. So, it's actually good. Rather than the opt-out system that he's going to sell to you soon. And remember, he is a very good salesperson. Right? Okay. My point number two is an organ donation. A motto for organ donation is a gift of life. A 
a gift means we voluntarily give to someone else, right? It's a gift. But if you apply opt out in the system, it is no longer a gift, a no longer a voluntary thing. So it has been something that you have to ponder about. And he probably say, why don't you sign your opt out op agreement? In, in an individual failure to your whole concept may indicate lack of understanding of the procedure rather than agreement of the policy. This will cause the danger that individual may, might end up the organ be procured without their own consent or when they have a real objection to that procedure. Presuming consent and ignoring the wishes of potential donor's family could cause major distress to the relative and to the partner. This, ladies and gentlemen, will lead to adverse publicity of the cause of the organ donation, which reduce the organ donation. And the worst thing, it will adversely affect their trust, their respect to us, doctors and the medical profession. And remember, at the time of death, the wishes of the victim family should be more important than those the victim. They are, after all, still alive and to live with the consequences and the decision they make for the victim. So, I think good enough point to actually tell our opt-in system is good. He will tell why don't we follow the good country like Spain or our neighbouring country Singapore. Let me walk you to Spain, right? So, opt-out legislation for organ donation has been there since 1979. However, there is no opt-out register for those who do not wish to become organ donors. If your system is good, you should have a registry, right, Malaysia? And its opt system is dormant and non-publicized with no financial incentive ever spent to record objection by the Spanish citizen. It actually a soft opt-out system where doctors can retrieve organs due to presumed consent subject to the requirement of seeking patient possible refusal to donate and it can be done by checking their background, belief and belongings and by consulting proxy. Remember, consulting proxy decision makers. Since most patients does not register as donor, do not carry donor card, family members are always consulted for consent with their wishes are always final and organ procurement will not happen in the practice where the grieving family members refuse to do so. Sounds familiar, right? Like opt-in system. Spanish law theoretically imposes an opt-out but it is actually a system of opt-in. What are the success, ladies and gentlemen? Spain actually has a sufficient medical resources of universal access to healthcare, particularly organ transplant. The nationals have a positive attitude towards organ donation and the more important thing is the healthcare professional actually play a very big role in organ donation and train to maximize organ donation through donor detection, brain death and all that leads to death. Let's go to the neighbouring country, Singapore. Out has been has been told that actually it's so good to increase 90% of the sub donor pool in Singapore. But the reality was much, much less encouraging. The number of the disease donor actually per year remain low and has not risen accordingly. It is believed that the current Singaporean system, sorry Singaporean here, represent a weak form of consent where emergency ward doctors has been very reluctant to actually talk about organ donation. So you have a bigger pool, big pool, but no one to talk about organ donation is still a failed system. Right? So it is, I agree, time to change. But change to this side rather than to this side. Okay, to my side. Change the how we practice the system. Okay, we have to improvise, enhance, enforce our opt-in system. What by doing what? By doing Make sure that our governmental agency collaborate, like Dr. Omar said, yeah, to actually increase the numbers of educate, the numbers of public 
to understand about positive attitude culture towards the organ donation yeah and the most importantly we must enforce knowledge skills and training we must have more Dr. Omar, more Datin Lela, more Diana, more Mr. Murali, and more Datuk Ghazali, rather than actually trying to change the system. And we of course need a lot more transplant surgeon. How can a trans for a transplant surgeon want to actually procure a lot of organ if you change the system to opt out? They go holidays, bye. Right? Sorry, okay. Avengers, accept her to my side, please. Okay? So I pledge every nephrologist and everyone here being as Avengers, accept her. We change the system to opt in and make it better. Right? So Malaysia is not ready for opt out yet. And it has been believed the rise in donation for the efforts of celebrities and public health as well to encourage outside people to donate and donation has been proved to increase if we do it in prominent culture okay these are some of the pictures actually show a lot of celebrities also been there and he also be one of the key officers my friends yeah we also have to encourage a lot of forum to actually increase the education among the public yeah, we have a lot of forum, but we only do it three monthly, three monthly, and it is a very re not in a remote area. So I believe we should join a lot of NGOs and enhance all these forum. Do it weekly, do it monthly, or even you can actually do it daily in each and every day possible to encourage the motion. Yeah, so. I believe we have to improve the infrastructure of transplantation in order to increase wealth and investment and we need to shift the social stigma coupled with religious and cultural belief that are plaguing the members of the public and we have to change our mindset through the dissemination of knowledge and the promotion of community ethics, altruism and social compact. I give some solving way of solving the donor shortage we can do combination of mechanical devices, biomedical engineering, and revitalization of organ from sudden death. Take it, this VAD device, which actually surface, surpass the number of heart transplant. And also we can do more research in growing organs in the lab with combination of the bioartificial or organic scaffolds and stem cell repopulation. With this, perhaps one fine day, we can have our own bioengineered kidney. Yeah? So the future is bright, but we, what we are trying to do now, or what are Iqbal trying to do now? Changing the system? Come on. We should stay in opt-in, but actually improvise, improve the system. Okay, so we need a system that is essential for modern and human societies which is fair, justice and give us freedom to choice and of course future development of organ donation is very vital here. And the most in fact, the important factors to improve disease donation lies on all of these factors and we have to enhance and encourage all these factors to be strong enough to actually increase the donor uh, rate. And we have to take it one step at a time. It takes five years for Avengers to bring back Thanos and kill them. It's okay as long as it doesn't change the system. Alright? You cannot see him, okay? <laughs> I would like to complete my my talk or my debate by giving you Sir Arthur William word. Do more than belong, participate. Please participate. Do more than care, we help. Do more than believe, we practice. Do more than be fair, be kind. Do more than forgive, forget. And do more than dream work. This is very important. We work on to improve the opt-in. And Malaysia is really, really not ready for it. And I picture show you a thousand words. Yeah, I would like to end up with Malaysia is really not ready, Dr. Iqbal, for the out, out system. With that, I rest my case.
you, Fatima, uh, for the exciting talk. Uh, sitting beside Iqbal, I can feel the heat. Yeah. So, uh, the audience, uh, I have to remind you again, you can start to move your seat if you support the Fadina to this side. Right? So, next, uh, Iqbal, um, to actually have uh, his 15 minutes um, to actually state his, uh, to attract support that uh, we should move to opt out system. Right? So, Iqbal, you have 15 minutes. Uh, not yet, okay, fine. <laughs> Give you extra 30 seconds. So, since we have a bit more time, I have decided to add an additional session whereby the, each and every debater will receive one question from the chairperson. And they have to actually answer that. Uh, then you all can decide and move, okay? Iqbal. You have 15 minutes. Start now. Okay, thank you very much, Professor Lim Sukhoi. Very good morning to uh, Dr. Fadina. Of course, very good morning to our colleagues, local and foreign. But it just made it personal now. Now I'm really pissed off. I came to this with full respect for you. Now it's going to be war. <laughs> it's VWIPM versus what? Nefro UPM? Okay, anyway. So I'm really here to actually convince you all that opt out is the uh, way to go. And, and the question is, is opt out? Is Malaysia ready? And the answer is absolutely. In fact, it's way overdue. Okay? And the outline of my argument is going to be simple. First, I'm going to convince you that there's a transplant crisis in the country. And then I'm going to define opt out properly and why it's a good move. Okay? Because I think you're misleading and you're scaremongering the public now. So that, that's why I'm really pissed off now. Okay? <laughs> But because Fadina is a very popular, she's Insta famous, she's got like, I don't know how many thousands of followers. So this is for the ones who, who you have to understand, untuk yang tak faham what the, the, the essence of this debate is, adakah Malaysia is a deal untuk sistem opta? Sebab you all tahu kan untuk menjadi penderma organ, penderma organ category. Sekarang ni sistem ni you kena register atau berikrar untuk menjadi penderma. Okay? Sekarang ni, Opta ni semua orang dianggap penderma. Jangan dengar cakap Dr. Fadina cakap semua orang dipaksa menjadi derma. There's a difference there, okay? So, and kalau you tak nak menjadi penderma, you just have to say it. That, that's the essence of opta, okay? That's the only Malay, uh, Malay slides I'm going to put. So, Dr. Ipa, you're given extra marks by uh, doing it in Dewey language. Thank you. Because, you know, she's very famous. This is going to be based on comparative goals. Okay. Anyway, opta. She's saying that it's taking your organs without your consent, you know. So this is absolutely far from the truth. And we have to understand why are we actually debating opt-out? The objective of debating opt-out is to increase the cadaveric uh, organ donation. Okay, because so it goes in hand, hand in hand with my argument here, okay? So Fadina, I'm gonna remind you, you know, the prevalence of anesthesial failure in Malaysia, in terms of prevalence, we stand eighth in the world, and that's due to diabetes, right? as compared to Japan and Taiwan who are more having aging populations. But when you break it down to age groups, the younger end stage of failure will top the world. Okay, now this is said, now you know what I'm trying to get at. This young patient should be undergoing transplantation. And again, this is a 10 year challenge. Dialysis patients have doubled in the last 10 years, whereas um, <coughs> patients with dialysis has tripled. Whereas transplant, it's, it's sort of on the decline, okay? Now this is a very important thing that you have to understand, Farina. So if you were to answer it's renal failure, we stand at the bottom there just after uh, Taiwan and Japan. But you have to understand, this is the, the tra okay, so it divides into transplant HDMPD. And as you can see, well done. She's a PD person as well. In terms of PD, the country has done well. Because we're at average, whether it's developed or underdeveloped, we're about 20% PD. But you look at transplant, where you know, we're like 1%, you can't see that, we're very efficient at HD. So, what this graph is trying to tell you, if you're an anesthesia or failure, you're probably going to be on HD, right? And when you look at the transplant as well, it's all very much cadaveric, it's not living related. And as I said, this is much to do with cadaveric as well. Again, this is a kidney, organ disease donation. We are after Guatemala, <laughs> Bolivia, Nicaragua. No disrespect to them, you know, they're having a turmoil there, but Malaysia should not be there. Okay, Farina? So, transplant decline in Malaysia, and very quick history again, just to upper. 
Our first kidney transplant was in 1975. Our first deceased kidney transplant, 1976. However, it's in decline. Liver transplant, 1995. Heart transplant, 1997. Lung transplant, all are in decline. And I just want to say, I always say this to everybody. The first bypass was in the same year, 1975. And they have uh, you know, developed and evolved naturally as it should be. 40 years is enough time for, for a program to mature. So what I'm trying to tell you is, there has to be some accountability. I'm sorry, this is Malaysia, by the way. Okay, this 44 years of trying and failing is enough already. Okay, something. It's like you try, you're the CEO of Adidas, you're selling 100 shoes every year for 44 years, and you're not, you're not, okay, you're not. There's something wrong. Okay, and this is all picked up by the media. 25,000 patients are waiting for a transplant. So number one point I was trying to say, transplant is in a crisis. I hope you agree with me, and we need to do something about it. And one of it is opt out. Okay. This is for you, five, and to the four people who have been doing this for 44 years. Insanity, five, is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. You keep telling, ah, oh, come on, step by step, are you all? Do you think, personally, that in 10 years that we're going to have 200 kidney transplant? Well, you know, absolutely not. Because, as I said, we've given whoever's in charge 44 years already, okay? So these are the new strategies that occur. So number one, you have to actually, this is one major medical mistake in our medical system. I have to say this because we do not have a pure transplant surgeon. In fact, we have to depend on the, uh, you know, the, 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 the niceness of urologists who's got an interest in transplant. But this is all reversible, this one. I, I do not know why this is, so uh, you know, it's reversible, it's, you know, something it's not like it's irreversible. And then, of course, whether you're in developed or uh, underdeveloped, you have to continue educating the public, politicians, religious leaders, policy makers, and we have to work hard and have a very never living. Okay, so invest in MPRC, IMR, MyCast, for example, Odyssea, which is an academic program on organ donation and transplantation. And we have to decentralize. It cannot be central. What about the people in Kota Baru, in Sabah, Sarawak? It does not make sense to just do transplant in HKL and Salaya, for example. And it has to be a shared responsibility because transplant is not just very, <coughs> it's not just MOE, it should be MOE private, even in there, for example, and one of it is, of course, opt out as well, right? Now, of course, we're just talking about the kidneys, what about the, the transplant surgeon, uh, the liver surgeon who are just waiting for category, the lungs, heart, or near, all dependent on the successful category transplant. Okay, so I'm going to define to you again what an opt out is an opt out is we are presuming that everyone agrees to donate their organs and unless they express not to, okay? So there's two types of soft out. One is, of course, where you need the, uh, you know, if you want to take it out, you have to get the, uh, the, the consent of the family. Where hard opt out, you just take it. You don't need to ask their permission. It, and it's never been about forcing people to hand over their organs, okay, by Dina. So these are the pros, uh, pros of opt out. It's, it's a systemic inclusion in a more efficient way. It reduces organ wastage. It, you know, it, it beats you going around asking for pledges. It brings transplant into the public debate. It increases awareness amongst the public. It increases awareness amongst the doctors. And it treats the problem of inertia and apathy, which I believe amongst our doctors, and it changes the mindset. So again, and, uh, it, it gives us a, when you're implementing it, it indirectly increases awareness and educates everyone rather than forcing everyone to give the organs. Now I know, again, Dr. Omar and the rest of MTRC says Spain has successful care program, it's nothing to do with opt-out. Well, this is Spain, which has the best, uh, you know, in terms of care That's like a very rich friend of yours who drives a 5 Series BMW telling you, five, your 10-year-old five, Mazda is fine, it's just getting from A to B. No, you don't say that. And if you're a student as well, sorry, and you ask to look at this data, Look at this, most successful transplant programs are opt out, whether it's direct or indirect, it doesn't matter. And that, you don't need a statistician to say that it's statistically significant. And of course, you don't compare durians with oranges. We're not, we're not Spanish. So, so, but you look at it, but if you want to compare apples with apple, you look at Austria and Germany. Um, you know, Austria is an opt out, Germany is an uh, opt in. You see the difference there, right? And in fact, many countries are changing to opt out. So, Please explain your point then. So you know, Netherlands for example, 2018, and of course the UK, you know, Switzerland and Germany are thinking about it because they're transplant rate. Of course, so what, what's your, you know, evidence for saying, you know, you don't need opt-out, you don't need, it's ridiculous, okay? 
So Malaysia hopefully is going to go in the same way. And again, UK is still planning for opt out, hoping to save at least 700 lives, you know, even though their necks are up to there with the transplant, okay? And they have so much to lose. You see that news, for example, they're at a breaking point, but they're still going for opt out. Does it make any sense to you? Okay? So when you're talking about negative fact, backfire, backlash, you know, the number of cardiac transplants we've done is only two, what do they have to lose? One transplant per year? Come on now, man. Okay, the special cases, I'm gonna tell you, Brazil and France, all right? They were hard opt out. So Brazil tried to do this. Brazil, but they were most precision poor and illiterate. They had no idea, they couldn't opt out. And they had a live, high level of mistrust watch in medical professions. I don't think Malaysians have. We have a mistrust watch, the judges, the judiciary system, for example, the politicians, but not the medical, I don't think so. And France, for example, went to negative publicity after they just took corneas out of a 19-year-old without family's consent. Of course, so what we do is, we don't, so we don't use this as a thing to say, don't do opt out. We just say, okay, we let them avoid this, all right? So will there be a revolt and outcry? No, because look, we implemented Black Shield School, no revolt, right? <laughs> Smoking ban, nothing. GST, implemented SSC, nothing. We have local elections every other week, no. We changed government like a pro, you know? We, you know, we changed government we like the Australians change their prime ministers, right? It's just not going. But Malaysians are more mature than we think. We're not going to go on a rampage. So, you know, have faith in the Malaysians, Dr. Omar and Dr. Diana, it's fine. And it's not all about autonomy, otherwise you should be talking about the smokers, the anti vax it's all about the beneficence, non maleficence just justice, I don't have time to actually say it. But you can see that, you can read that, it's all about, there's other principles of ethics you need to do. This is a survey recently done in HKL, the heart of transplant, in pharmacy, pharmacy staff, 270 respondents. 82 not pledged as donors. My goodness. Uh, okay, I mean, and you say 99, I never thought of donating. It's okay. And uh, 37, do not know how to register. Are you come on now? 52. <laughs> <laughs> it speaks for itself again. Okay, okay and you can test the crowd here, like it's probably gonna be the same thing. 44 years, Fadina, please Fadina. Okay? <laughs> again, so, like, pledging does not mean donation. Again, this one basically looks Chinese and the Malays, but it ends up the Chinese are the ones who's, who's donating. And it's not because Chinese die more, lah, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you know, because Malays do not pledge, all right? And of course, I haven't verified this, but most of the organs that we treat were not organ pledges. What is that to you? And if a person wanted to pledge now, go and ask them, you do it now. I know you're a pledger. The, the, the website is down. You have to go to the Wisma MTRC, Sejara, or you have to wait for one of the demo organ booth. And of course, you know that 222,000 This is so accountability, I don't know, you know? Ayo. And of course, even, no, because Dr. Lily's son even went, wanted to, so smart, wanted to pleasure his organ, but he couldn't. He even went down to HKL, and it was closed, that, that room, that little room was dark. So, Okay, if it's successful, you're going to be a, you know, late Muslims love this, we're going to be the, the you know, leader in cadaveric transplant. But again, this is the most important that I want to tell you. If you want to implement a successful opt-out or anything like smoking, it has to be a lot of preparations first. So, and this defines <clears throat> educating the public, and basically, about the change in justification, educate, campaign, increase awareness, gain support, trust. You have to be transparent, and you read, have to weed out the and count the tools like Dr. Fadlina, definitely. So don't use this language, oh, we're taking organs without consent. The organs are the property of the state, which he said, see? You have no choice, it's against our will. But say it nicely enough, we presume that you are happy to donate your organs. <laughs> Those that are not happy to donate is considered a donor. You have the rights to refuse to donate, okay? And you will not be treated differently if you opt out, okay? And to those who are opting out, I agree with you, you have to have some, you know, have a place where they can say, oh, we want to opt out. So I'm going to finish a bit early, and I'm actually honored to debate with the diamond, aka the debate queen. It's not me who went and started a war, it's actually, I don't know, okay? But as you said, this, is, uh, this has become personal now, right? But in fact, I actually want to take this opportunity to try and change the minds of our MSD colleagues, my council, because I know I'm the, the black sheep right now, it's fine. The NTRC, the MSN people, the nephrologists young and old, and everyone in this hall, because we are responsible now for the fate of transplant. We've got to be brave for the change. We've got nothing to lose, okay? So in conclusion, <clears throat> actually transplant, we're at a crossroad. It's in a crisis, and a lot of people are dying waiting for an organ, especially liver, for example. 
after 44 years, you need to act. Somebody has to be responsible. Opt out is a presumed consent, and it's not me forcing everyone to give their organs. Opt out is a good option to increase our can value rate. And as as Doctor, you know, Doctor Omar said, yes, even if TT is the NTRC, but then Doctor Omar will say, hey, you, you know, no need, no need. Then, what, what, what can we do? Please, Doctor Omar, come on. So he said it. The top guy has said, let's consider an opt out. But you know, so. With that, I'm really sorry, but you know, come and follow us on Facebook. <laughs> you know, uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, uh, we, got a, we got a minus mark for uh, doing some advertisement. Yeah? Okay, but uh, anyhow, I feel you, uh, Iba. So now we're going to have a five minutes uh, rebuttal time. Uh, so, so, uh, Fadina, you have uh, five minutes uh, to say what you want uh, as regard to uh, Iqbal's remark. Thank you, Prof. McGee. Thank you, Iqbal. I told you he's a very good salesperson and he's actually a very good politician also. Okay? So, you'll be careful. Okay? Don't be so interested to him because if he changes the system, we are in trouble. Right. I'll get back you all to the motion. Malaysia is not ready yet for the opt-out system, right? We are not ready yet, okay? So it means that we have to change the system or to change the government or to change whatever that you're going to say to actually start with this opt-out system. And at this point of time, our financial, our resources are not allowing us to do so. And I would like to enhance again, please increase the number of transplant coordinators, transplant nurses, give me more money to NTRC to actually work on how to increase more awareness on organ donation so that a lot more people to opt in and give their life to others, right? Okay, he has said about cabbage, come on. Cabbage, how many more cardiothoracic surgeons? Every day we produce a lot more cardiothoracic surgeons and they got a lot incentive as compared to those who procure an organ. I can ask Mr. Murali here, how much you get while procuring an organ, Mr. Murali? <laughs> quiet then, he's just giggling, right? And Albert Einstein say do some insanity over and over and over again. But look, who is he now? He's an Albert Einstein, ladies and gentlemen. So we have to do over and over again, give an awareness or opt-in, improvise the system, make it better. Inshallah, the organ donation rate will increase. And you forget my slide about the so-called cannot sign because, because they are not aware. You have to remember, a lot of us wanted to donate, but we don't have measures, like what he said, to sign in and be a donor. So we again have to change this system of donating the organ. More counter to register, 24 hours, everybody can just go and register and make them understand what is opt-in. And misunderstanding on opt-in is the very bigger problem in Malaysia. So again, if we enhance the education, we go to the college, we go to the school, we go to the universities, we can actually encourage people to give their life voluntarily rather than vague the ideas of opt out in them. Ladies and gentlemen, it is very clear. Move to my side. Malaysia is not ready yet for opt in. Maybe perhaps 40 years to come, probably another when Malaysia is so strong financially, resourcefully, then perhaps we can consider opt out. With that, thank you very much. Thanks, Adina, for the debate. Now we get Ipa to spend his five minutes uh, to respond to Adina Dibata. Iba, five minutes from now. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I haven't got much to say except for if I really try to convince you, and it looks like you will not convince Adina. But as I said, you know, we've tried our best for forty-four years. 
right? Oh, no, we wait another 40 years. In fact, we are very privileged to be here because we have the chance to change. I mean, it's our, because if you, you went to Dato Ghazali's final dinner and he has regret that he did not turn around transplant. Isn't that right, Dato Ghazali? <laughs> but, you know, I was there. He was half, he was in tears, but it's not. <laughs> After this, if I don't, I'm joining KPJ Damansara. Okay. <laughs> and I'm being honest, I'm trying my best here. Yeah. But uh, so I would say that it's enough. 44 years is enough. Uh, you know, I'm not going to listen to it's due to funding, la. it's because of the culture, it's because of Islam. La. It, this is boring. Okay? So I'm just trying to tell you it's either we, we pray. Or we can just stick this thing for 40 years, uh, you know, 50 transplant per year. This, this is just not what we want, okay? Because we can do it, you know, we can be up there. So, with that, I again, I'm telling everybody here that we can change it. It's our time now that, that, that yes, please um, support Opta. Thank you very much. Okay, um, so. Now with the two debaters uh, on the stage, um, I would like to open the session to the floor uh, for Q&A. At the same time, you all can start to move uh, your seat right, to show your support. Right? Uh, no, 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 no. I want them to physically show it. If they are touched uh, by either of the debaters, you can see Dr. BJ is moving. It's not He's asking questions, sorry. I thought he's going to move to the other side. Okay. Uh, I'm yes. definitely going to move to the other side, but I'm a bit lazy. But uh. I actually want to highlight a few things. And I think uh, uh, a few of the sessions regarding disease organ donation, which led up to this debate about opt in or opt out, there are big issues with disease organ donation, donation as you have rightly pointed out. Now, uh, I agree with uh, Iqbal wholeheartedly, 100%. I think it's time for change because we have been literally sitting and not doing anything for the last 44 years. We have, as you rightly said, Einstein has said, we keep repeating, doing the same thing, expecting different results. We have to change. The country has changed. Why can't we change? Because to blame the surgeons and say there are not enough surgeons, this, it's always the same old story. But we have been doing the same number of transplants every single year. Nothing has changed. Has there been ever an incidence where the surgeon was not available for a transplant? No. From 1975, I'll just check it, Mr. Murray. And he has done 350 transplants over the years. We have not said no. Many, many years ago, there was a conference. Surgeons came back from the conference just to do a transplant. Right? So to point fingers at everybody, it has to stop. It has to be a concerted effort to make the change that we want to see cadaveric disease organ donors increase. And I think the right way forward is actually to do this opt-out system. Yes, it's legislation, agreed, but we have to start somewhere. If not, everybody's going to say, wait for NTRC to do something, wait for MOH to do something, wait for MOE to do something. Everybody is fragmented. Right? So I, I, I completely agree with Iqbal. I'm fully behind you. All right? Ministry of Health tried to look at trying to get transplant surgeons in. They realized with the numbers we are doing is not feasible economically. You get a transplant surgeon and he does 10 transplants a year, you pay so much for what? So use what we have, build up the pool first. And then we talk about how we want to further expand. Okay, Iqbal, you got one more. Uh, next, Dr. Kazali. Uh, Thank you. Um, because Iqbal mentioned my name two times. So, <laughs> uh, I, I think um, sometime in the future, maybe hopefully nearer uh, later, we may be going to be opting out. But uh, I, I can't recall whether the, the debate say we need to change now or we just change. Um, because if we had to change now, there may be some issues. Um, 
when we did the knowledge and attitude and practice survey uh, in Mala, I was doing that in HKL uh, five years ago, presented to Penang uh, uh, three, four years ago, and part of the data Iqbal shared. Um, we found a few things, and that was about 900 plus respondents from about 10,000, uh, 9,000 plus HKL uh, staff, all ranked from doctors to the lowest, uh, 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 what you call the uh, rank staff. So about 10% uh, respondents. And we have asked many questions, uh, but some of the questions that you want to share in today's session is, is, is the gap. Right? For example, uh, you are there, you know about transplantation, what organ can be transplanted, who can donate. You know, 80, 90% say yes. So it's not a lack of knowledge, not because of ignorance. But there's a gap between that knowledge and attitude and practice. So um, when uh, it comes to a question, do you agree with the practice of donating organs after death? 76% said yes, but when you ask that different question, do, uh, are you an organ pleasure, it's only 8.7%. So, so there's a gap, gap between whether you would like to donate or whether you actually pledge. So there's a gap there. Uh, that's attitude and practice. Um, and if you are not a pleasure, what is the reason? And, and, and this is important in, in our discussion today as to whether we change or not. And this is coming from what we believe to be more educated, those who access to information, those who access to system to either say yes or no, right? Uh, assuming that, uh, I came from SKF. <laughs> uh, so um, if we accept that, then this respondent say, why did not pledge? Um, one is afraid medical care will be compromised when they become ill. That's about 10%, 10.7%. So this is medical staff. They fear that if you go for opt-out, 10% think that some of the care of their loved one who are critically ill, maybe they may themselves on the later, will be compromised. Uh, so this is knowledge attitude. Um, feel that organ donation may be against religious teaching, 8.6%, almost 10%. But these are uh, those who do not agree with donation or opting out, right? Disagree with the practice, 4.5%. Uh, of, of, disagree with the practice of organ donation. So you add on that, that's almost 25%. And the question on, uh, do you agree with the implementation of presumed consent or opting out in Malaysia? It's not 50%, but uh, it was actually 65.8% clear no, and only 27% said yes. But if you get uh, go into the uh, WHO guidance uh, principle and the Istanbul Declaration, it states clearly that um, um, system of uh, option of uh, 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 opting out. I, I can't recall the actual word, but it, it means to have an opting out that there should be a fair and uh, easy system of registering that wish. Uh, so, so the infrastructure, the system, may not just be there. Uh, so even um, uh, we may want to have it that uh, implemented, but the current system and the current attitude and knowledge uh, that is prevailing has got some gap. Uh, that may be actually backlash uh, uh, if we have to implement it now. Uh, but having said that, you know, countries that have done very successful program with opting out, uh, which I said is by the library, like Britain, as a show, uh, had already decided to go on opting out, right? So, so meaning, even those countries that are already doing quite well think that they still can improve by opting out. So I think we may be moving that way. In fact, we should be moving that way, that way. but some of this information for those who are thinking of implementing now, to be taken into consideration. Thank you. Deepa, have anything to, anything to respond to that? Um, thank you, Dato, for supporting Top Top. I think that's all. Are you agreeing with me? Dr. Herman? Okay, uh, thank you very much. I consider Don Deepa as a good friend of mine, but I don't support him this time. <laughs> Uh, I just want to share, um, but having said that, I think uh, Dr. Fadima said uh, it's 40 years is too long. I think that's a hope for us to actually have an opting out system probably earlier than that. 
Uh, I did a survey through Twitter, which received more than almost 4,000 respondents. I asked him whether uh, is it race ready to have an opting out system or not. Okay, the finding is, I just want to share the finding. 36% uh, uh, says, or said yes, agree to it. Okay, only 22% said no. Okay, meaning that those who say yes, uh, yes is actually more than those who say no. And surprisingly, 42% uh, were unsure. Okay, meaning that, you know, I'm not sure why they are not sure whether they know what opting out, but they do, uh, they're not sure about it, or they do not understand what opting out is. But I think there's, there's still hope for us to actually convince the public to actually agree to opting out. So if people can appear more on TV or something like that, I think there's a hope for us to convince this 42% again. Okay, thanks very much. Um, um, okay, if possible, uh, try to ask them questions so that they can defend, right? Okay. okay. Uh, sorry, I uh, would like to congratulate uh, both presenters. Uh, the arguments were very strong. Okay, I nearly going to the other side, but I think I would think that definitely um, what Dr. Himan said. Uh, there are forty two percent that is still uh, unsure, and um, we have to look uh, into the future. You know, I'm talking about uh, the newer generation. So these are the people that I think we need to educate them more. Uh, make them more aware uh, what is happening and what would be their future be and what is their hope. So um, I can't ask questions here, but I would just like to say that um, we need to do more in terms of the uh, public education, public awareness, and um, we hope that the future uh, will be better in terms of transplant. So I must just say that uh, if one you should have said, uh, I am inevitable, or out is inevitable. Correct. Okay, thank you. If you understand what I mean. So, Suryati, so, do you uh, support Ipa or Padina? You didn't say that. Oh, okay. Uh, Suryati, do you support Ipa or Padina? Yes, I do. Okay. 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 When you're talking about to change, you should know that whether you is optimize and maximize the effort or not. I always think positive, but when you want to think positive, you should ask yourself whether you maximize and optimize the effort given to you. We cannot see back tawakal tawakal. Tawakal means that is it your effort maximize and optimize? Then suddenly we change from opt in to opt out. We are going to have drown and trillions of patients become. Then where are the resources come from? Where to get the money? Where to get the resources? So it becomes vicious cycle again. So the main thing here is when we're talking about derma organ, is derma must come from bottom of your heart. It means that effort done, any permission, any education done. So this is the most important thing. So whatever is it, when we want to talk about derma organ, is of it for the time being. Because, again, we need to ask ourselves whether we maximize and optimize the effort given. And again, it must be equally distributed. Again, talking about money and budget and everything is, everybody, everybody knows is in equal distribution. Like our debate just now mentioned, how the cardiothoracic surgeon gets the incentive, how the urologists get their incentive. We're not talking about financial uh, incentive, we're talking about social incentive too. So, whatever is it, still we need to work harder and to be more positive. At the end of the day, we want to give of life. Thank you. Um, I'm still waiting for questions, so never mind. I will uh, ask them a question as a chairperson. Alright, so this is for Dr. Ipa first. Fadina did mention saying that. Uh, uh, public might think that the uh, doctors uh, will be less likely to save the patient's life if we have an opt-out system. What do you think? Okay, so thank you for that very important question. Because again, what I want to say is when we are uh, these countries, you know, when they plan to implement an opt-out, you know, the, they take one or two years to educate everyone from doctors to the public. 
and it's not like tomorrow we're gonna have lockdown. So don't 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 be fooled because I never said that we do it by tomorrow. We, we we you see the bill has to be passed straight like Netherlands and the UK. It takes two years to just discuss it in open and then we change it. You know, of course there'll be like trolls as I said the negative ones, but it's fine. It's you know. So um, yeah, so that's not true. Uh, it, it would be true if we suddenly did tomorrow. Okay, it's a Sunday. People wake up and there's an opt out. Definitely, we all not only that kind of thinking, but also people who say, hey, "Why are you forcing people to do their organs? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that?" Definitely not. But um, so it all goes down to very well planning before you implement. That is the essence of it. It's never meant to be forcing anything. It's never meant to be an overnight. Suddenly, hey, everybody wakes up, as I said. The way that developed countries are doing it, they educate <coughs> first everyone, politicians, religious leaders, and then they implement it. They implement it. So that answers all your questions about any misconceptions about uh, you know, about acting out by anyone, not just the public, but by the doctors, everyone. Okay, Fadina, I'm going to ask you the questions. Um, yes, uh, you. Um, you actually highlighted in your talk saying that there are many things that we can do but many things that you have said we are doing and we have been doing for the past 40 years so I just uh, want to pose you a question is do you think that a system change will be the fastest way to actually induce uh, changes rather than just talking about uh, all the efforts that we have been doing for the past many years okay, Thank you Prof Lim um, system change uh, makes a lot of difference. I, I agree to that. However, the motion is either we are ready or not towards it. Yeah. So if we are talking about changing the system, we must make sure everything that support that system to actually happen in beautifully is strong enough. If we change the system now, but the supporting are very frail, fragile, the system is also going to collapse. So I suppose, yes, like Iqbal said, it can be in the future, like Dr. Ghazali said and Hilman said, but it is not now. We have to emphasize, enforce the knowledge, educate the generation, what is opt-in, what is opt-out. Perhaps opt-in will be a better and easier way to approach people rather than opt-out. So make use strong, make the support system strong first, then only change the system. I suppose that answers the question. Any more uh, questions uh, or comments? Yes. Uh, please introduce yourself. Um, good morning. My name is Ansani. I'm training from Hospital Islam. Um, this is a question for Dr. Fadina. Um, I mean, we've been doing the same thing over, over 44 years. So yes. if we are going to continue with the opt-in system, um, what kind of drastic measures to actually you know, pull the public to, to increase more awareness to make the system work? Because otherwise we continue with the same pace, what we are doing now, we are well, probably going to be, you know, it's not going to change. So, thank you. Thank you. Right. The first thing ever is assemble. Remember, I show you Avenger assemble. We go together. The government, the non-government, the nephrologists, the urologists, the anesthetists, nurses, transplant coordinator, we work on the same setting, plan properly with a very much fund. If we don't have fund and during the budget we only get like very little, how are we going to make a system or how we educate the public mostly? And remember, like that Dr. Omar said. Only RTM shows an advertisement. Who watched RTM? <laughs> Sorry. Okay. All right. So we pay Astro, we pay TV3, we pay all the private uh, satellites to actually show more uh, advertisement on the market. Like what Thailand did, you know? So they are very well versed about transplant because the advertisement show a lot about transplant. But do we see any advertisement on transplant in TV? None. I think that's a good start because people watch TV. 
And of course, he's mentioned that I'm an Insta famous. Actually, FB, I'm not an Insta person. We go and attack the social media, like what Dr. Hilman is doing. Every one of us talk hashtag the more of them every day. You know, that only it can go reach the generation very well. So the system cannot be changed now. But we have to change how we think about it. We have to set our mind, change the stigma and change the mindset. That's how it is going to be. So assemble my dear colleagues. Yeah, a comment. Uh, Dr. Fadina said, uh, enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, okay, I, I need your uh, show of hands, since you're all uh, a bit lazy to move, <laughs> uh, it's fine. I, I need a show of hands. Uh, how many uh, agree with Fadina to say that uh, Malaysia is not ready for the opt-out system yet? Uh, can you raise your hand? Uh, we want to have a show of hands. Not ready yet. Okay, uh, let me count it. Do you keep it there? I want to count first. Everybody, please count. <laughs> five. Okay, Ipa say only five. Uh, who support Ipa's uh, view to say that Malaysia is, should change the opt out system? Okay. So about 100. <laughs> I just. I mean, joke aside, uh, I think the message is very clear uh, that uh, to do any change, we need preparation. We are not saying that we can change now. But I think a very important thing is whether we think we are moving towards that direction or not. Because we can't be saying that maybe in the future, but we are not doing anything. Then the system will change, right? So, so we have to probably, among the professional, because we have to understand we are the one going to drive the change if we are going to change. Because politician will come to you and say, maybe we should try opt out. Because this is uh, probably not their priority. So the professional probably should drive it if we think this is a better system. So, so I think a, a very important thing probably we should actually discuss among ourselves and say whether this is a system that we are moving towards. If we have that kind of an intention, then only we can do all the preparation to prepare towards that. Right? So that, that, that I think that is my own view. Uh, I am not uh, expressing any uh, support towards any side, but I think this is a good debate. I hope you all agree with me. Uh, please join me in thanking the two debaters for the excellent debate. Thank you. So we have a coffee break.